Okay. Um, well, thank you, everyone. Tonight is Thursday, April 16th, and I would like to call tonight's business, business meeting to order for the Scarborough School Board for Thursday, April 16th. As a reminder, this is a webinar. Um, we are live on YouTube. Um, can I please have the attendance? For the Scarborough School Board. Yes, Ms. Bergen. Here. Mrs. Giftos. Here. Dr. Gill. Here. Ms. Casalonis. Here. Ms. Layton. Here. Mrs. Scyther. Here. Mrs. Turner. Here. Mr. Caldwell. Here. And Mr. Bennett. Here. Okay. Just a couple of reminders with this format. Um, for the folks at home, if this is the first time that you have watched us doing a virtual meeting, um, things are going to run a little bit slower. We will do roll calls by attendance. Um, it, for the voting, um, it will help make sure that, A, you hear everybody on record. Um, the panelists will be raising their hands, so we may not have a more uh, our usually fluid conversations. It's going to be a little bit more disjointed. But that's just to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak in this formatting. Um, Kelly, could you share your the presentation? Please. You all set? Yep, ready when you are. Okay. Nope. Unless I have it on the wrong place, but I'm not seeing the screen. You're not seeing the screen? No. Can anybody? No. How's that? Ha ha, yes. Great. If you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the United States, States, States of America, 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 3.0 adjustments to the agenda. There are a couple of them. Um, first adjustment, I'd like to move the chair's report to after the adjustments. Um, I have a quick statement I'd really like to make tonight. Um, on 5.0, I'm not sure if everybody saw this or not, but we are postponing the budget public forum. Um, for the attendees who are here, if you are um, in line and want to speak to the budget, um, we will honor that, you know, the conversation. Um, but based on the fact that town council um, has postponed first reading, we really want to line up our public forum in accordance to their first reading. We just feel that that would be um, really helpful to have that conversation in unison. Um, so with that, are there any other adjustments before I move forward? Okay, seeing none. Um, I just really wanted to touch base about a bunch of things. And um, our lives have been radically altered since students left their buildings for the weekend on March 13th. Within the first two weeks of the crisis, before anyone understood the full magnitude of this impact, laptops were just deployed to every student in the district who needed one, daily meals were delivered to students in need, and our staff began the process of re-engineering what learning would look like for the duration of our stay-at-home mandate. On April 2nd, the board was presented with a distance learning plan, a comprehensive document that covered our 300 students' education across the four phase levels, including a grading plan for the last semester of the year. We would like to apologize for comments that were made during the board's review and discussion of that document and recognize they appeared to minimize staff efforts. It was never our intention to malign or criticize our staff. And further, 
if any individuals or phase levels felt singled out, please accept our most sincere apologies. We each recognize the hours you have spent in drafting a caring and thoughtful learning plan for your students and are deeply appreciative of these efforts. I now ask that we as a community consider patience, understanding, and acceptance as our new normals. Patience as the weekly learning plans are rolled out and adjusted based on new information, novel ideas, and student, teacher, and parent feedback. Understanding that every virtual classroom experience will be different just as every brick and mortar classroom experience is different. And finally, acceptance that not all the answers are yet known. The board has confidence that everyone in the district is working to ensure that students know they are missed, loved, and above all else supported during this time of uncertainty. In closing, I'd like to share the most meaningful statement I've heard during this pandemic. We are not working from home. We are home in a crisis and are trying to work. To all the parents and community members who are supporting their students learning at home while balancing your other responsibilities, we see you and we appreciate you. And to every member of our staff, thank you. Thank you for your flexibility and for creating an ongoing network of support for our students, all while simultaneously trying to care for yourselves and your families. We are grateful for all you do for Scarborough Public Schools. Thank you. Hillary. Um, thank you so much, Leanne, <clears throat> for that. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, I just wanted to add an apology on for myself. If anything I personally said was offensive or demeaning, I, I, I never meant for that to be the case. And, um, and like I said, I apologize for that again. And thank you for your, um, th your thoughts too, Leanne. Thanks, Hal. With that, is there any public comment tonight? Um, if you are one of our attendees, um, you can raise your hand and we can promote you to talk. Oh. Okay. And Crystal, I think I have you un I have you permitted. You should be able to speak. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, the um, uh, Teaching staff and the support staff appreciate those comments um, by both the chair and uh, Ms. Durgan. Um, I know that you have uh, two things on your agenda today. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, the last date of school and your upcoming calendar. And something that um, I would like the board to consider as you are debating the both the end date of school and the beginning of school is that there is a, a significant amount of work that teachers need to do and that support staff need to do to kind of wrap up their school year and or start their school year <laughs> and so if we've eliminated um, time for teachers and support staff to go in and get that work done at the end of the year things like cum files um getting student work portfolios pulled together that those kind of uh what we typically do the last day of school if you will um if there's no time built into the schedule for that then that creates a really rough start for the beginning of the year so i would encourage you to either um think about that as you are adjusting the calendar this year if that's what your plan is and or perhaps adding a day at the very beginning of next year in order to wrap up the year before. And I know that there might be conflicts as far as a calendar year and a contract year, um, but that work needs to be done. Like we need to physically do Hume files, for example. Um, and there are reports that we need to have ready for the next year's teacher. So as you are looking at both of those documents, if you could keep in mind that there's physical work that needs to be done, and if you can build that in, either, you know, even if it's in the middle of a school, you know, in the, during a summer day, you know, and everybody has a day in the summer kind of thing, or again, at the beginning of the year, depending on how long the school closure goes, I think that that would be really great 
and respectful of what the teachers need to do and what they would be doing their last few days um, of the school year. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right. Mr. Humpage, I have uh, promoted you. You should be able to speak. If you could state your name and your address just for the record. Certainly. My name is John Humpage. I'm uh, 8 Williamsburg Lane here in Scarborough. I just wanted to briefly say thank you uh, to the school administration and the teachers, the regular communications via email and the automated phone calls and text messages were, I think, outstanding to help me and my family understand what to expect and what y'all were working on. And the teachers over the last few weeks have been nothing short of exemplary as they're working with my, uh, I currently have two children in the school system, uh, both in middle school and high school. And the teachers are being exemplary as far as trying to accommodate um, and adjust to everything. And when my son misses a, a phone call with one of his uh, teachers, you know, they readily, you know, will uh, reschedule it and with, with no concern. So I just wanted to say thank you very much to all your efforts and to the excellent communication. Thank you for that. Are there any other comments for tonight? All right, seeing none, moving into the superintendent's report. Thank you, Leanne. Nice to be here tonight. And I thought it would be an opportunity um, not to spend a lot of time tonight, but to give the public a quick uh, look at what remote learning kind of looks like and examples of that. So here's just a snapshot tonight of what's going on in the district. I thought this quote was uh, quite worthy. Trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming when nothing is certain, anything is possible. So given what we've gone through for the last four weeks, I can say that I think we can all relate to that wonderful quote. On the next slide, we've had many of the schools, and I don't have a sample of everybody reaching out to all the families and students, but at your leisure, I would encourage the public to look at these sites and look at the wonderful Red Storm connection that the staff did with the high school students, the artwork that our students have done at Scarborough High School, and the staff messages are a sample of what's going on and what they're saying to the Scarborough Middle School students. And Wentworth staff, they had, I believe it's a YouTube, they reached out as well. And certainly um, the Wentworth student portfolio is a sample of some of the work that shows evidence of, of learning going on. And again, this is just one piece of some of the great outreach that we've done because honestly, it's that connection with the student that really matters at this point in time. And it's about the social emotional as well as the academic learning. On the next slide, I'm very pleased to say with the help of our, our um, town and the school side working together, you know, our technology departments share services together. It's a wonderful partnership. And we have made great strides to make sure that every family in Scarborough is connected to Wi-Fi. So I'm pleased to report it was either delivered today or tomorrow. We have 16 hotspots where if a family is not connected, there are 16 spots that they can go to to make sure that their student, their child is connected. So universally, equitable. We're really trying to get there with the technology. And I'm just really pleased to report that we're close to having that happen. In addition to um, the good work that is going on with our students, here's a sample of the elementary schools where staff is taking an opportunity while they're teaching to also learn how to get better at this work. And to look at how they can stay connected with students. In this site, it talks about how to care for yourself, how to care for others. And again, part of this work, it's not just delivering instruction, it's just not connecting with students, 
but it's also on the side, you have to learn how to do this work. And it's enormous and it takes a good amount of time and we're just so blessed that we have resources out there for our staff. Here's uh, just some wonderful quotes that I included um, about uh, particularly at the elementary level, these quotes came from a parent or two, just acknowledging to the staff the good work that they're doing and recognizing um, how their child is learning. And on the left side, you'll see samples of, of uh, again, this is just a sample of, of some of the lessons and opportunities that teachers at the elementary level are delivering to our students. And I certainly hope that if you have time to maybe look at this slideshow a little bit more in depth. I know I'm not going in depth with every slide, but I just wanted to give people a good glance of, of what is going on K through 12. In addition, on um, the next slide, you will see that we've come a long way in a short period of time to kind of summarize all students have access to a computer. All students have the remote learning plan in place. I'm pleased to report that Unum Corporation with Ruth Recyclables, our business partners, have don donated um, certain books and supplies for our students and they just came right out of the woodwork to acknowledge that they wanted to provide services to our students. So I wanted to just recognize that. I think that's unbelievable that we've got people out there who are willing to donate and uh, make our learning opportunities better for all students. And then a senior survey has been sent out to gather input on year-end activities. I applaud the high school for doing that. I think it's important to collect the data when you think about what type of graduation that we should have, where it should be, how it should be held. Those are the opportunities. That's the data that's gonna drive the decisions. So kudos to the high school for doing that. Next slide. Um, you know, this is a huge, huge issue here. We have some amazing bus drivers. And the opportunity each day to deliver food and the necessary school supplies to students to be able to do that K through 12 is amazing. And I just have to say, sometimes I think we talk a lot about what's going on inside the schools and the wonderful opportunities, but we cannot forget People like our bus drivers have one of the most important jobs. It's the first person they see in the morning and the last person they see at the end of the day. And once again, they've stepped it up and they're providing food and supplies to our students. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody that has been involved with this work, with our community, with the parents, for your patience. Our students are amazing. We can never do this without our teachers, our support staff, administrators, the bus drivers, the ITs, custodians, food staff, and our volunteers. It's just a remarkable that the, the work is going on. It's a work in progress. And it's certainly, um, as I said early on, we were flying the plane while we were building this work. And uh, I thank you all for the five or 10 minutes to report on the good work that we're doing with this um, <clears throat> remote learning and we'll even get better as the weeks go on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Sandy, this was a great report. Um, again, I know I said it before, thank you to all of the staff um, for everything that you have done, basically on a dime to keep our students engaged and know that they're cared for. Um, there, there's not enough ways to say thank you for all that has happened in the last few weeks. Um, Nick? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I'm inspired by a lot of what uh, Sandy just showed. You know, we've all spent a lot of time in our houses <laughs> over the past several weeks. And so hearing inspirational news about some of the creative things that are happening um, with Unum and Ruth's, our bus drivers, the hot spots, you know, Throughout history, when our country or even our state or our community faces challenges, that's when people really come together and they rise and they support each other. And I just think it's really impressive to see how that's come together in our community and other communities around us. But thank you so much for taking time to share that. It's time well spent and it brightens everybody's day a little bit. 
Okay. Moving into the uh, student representatives report. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so I just want to start out and show some fun activities that students have been doing during this online learning period. So um, sixth graders have been taking the time to learn about geography of Nepal and Mount Everest, which is super cool. Um, they're also enhancing their language skills using Duolingo, which is like this app that helps you learn Spanish and all these different languages. Um, and then gym teachers have put together this activity plan to make sure students are getting active during their time of social And you can go to the next slide. I don't know who's controlling. Yeah. Um, so seventh grade social studies students are, have been asked to record their life during these times. So in a job and just kind of talk about what's going on in their day and what are they, what they're doing, because in a couple of years from now, this is going to be history. It's a really unprecedented time. It's really important that we'll be able to look back and remember how we got through this and we all pulled together. Um, and I just think it's so important to have that personal reflection. Um, if people are feeling stressed or worried during this pandemic, and then seventh grade students have been able to watch energy experiments online. Um, and they've been watching ones involving moving carts, smashing model and play, <laughs> which sounds really fun. <laughs> and then you can go to the next slide. So this was from a while ago when we were back in school, but the middle school set up flags from all different countries in the lobby, as you can see. And these were to welcome students from all over the world. And this was an initiative that came from two seventh grade students. And then you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so these are some kind words of encouragement from natural helpers and Miss Montgomery. They created this random acts of kindness where students um, were able to generate happy thoughts and happy ideas and ways that people could do a random act of kindness and they put them all over the high school. And the next slide is Max, I believe. Already. <laughs> That's my sister and she's a second grader at Pleasant Hill right now. You can hear me, right? Okay, you can hear me. Okay, cool. I didn't want to like start talking and then have you not hear me. Okay, so. K through five students have been given the opportunity to bring home devices to continue school like education during this quarantine. Students can use enriching sites and activities like iReady for math and reading practice and coding studios and hour of code activities on the Scarborough School Department kids website, which is an online learning portal that families can access at home. Some classrooms have utilized platforms like Google Meet to meet via video chat and the primary schools in Wentworth are also releasing daily announcements read by students at the schools, which has been really nice. I know my sister this past week, they played her announcement and a lot of it's good for kids to like see their peers, which is really nice. All right, you can go to the next slide. All right. On February 28th through March 1st, Scarborough High School performed this year's one act play, which was Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol for the public. The show was directed by Marissa Shelter Brown and featured amazing actors, stunning sets, and dazzling costumes, which were done by me. Uh, the following weekend, Scarborough High School hosted the Regional Main Drama Festival, in which nine schools came to compete for a panel of judges from the Main Drama Council for a chance to perform on the state level. Scarborough was lucky enough to score second out of nine schools and was the Class A runner-up out of the four Class A schools. Individual acting awards went to senior Cyrus Zakowski, senior Phineas Nutting, and myself, junior Max Bennett, as we are, were all selected for the all festival cast. The judges also gave a special accommodations to our production team, those being an ensemble award to the cast, and they also awarded me for best costume direction. So that was pretty cool. All right, you can go to the next slide. All right, so as for hosting the festival, it was an enormous success. Nine schools came to Scarborough on March 6th and 7th, the Class A schools being Scarborough, Noble, York, Thornton Academy, and Marshwood, and the Class B schools being Oak Hill, Casco Bay, Trape Academy, and Baxter Academy. 
As a part of the festival, we were all able to watch the plays that the other schools put on and attend workshops in improv, audition prep, and stage combat. And we're given a lot of time to just go around and make friends. It was super fun to be surrounded by like-minded people, learn more about our craft from the judges, and to be able to share our talents with people who would really appreciate it. I had multiple students and directors from other schools come up and tell me that this was the best one act festival they'd ever been to. On behalf of Scarborough One Acts, I wanna thank Scarborough administration for supporting us and allowing us to create this space for all of these amazing young performers. As for the rankings, the class A winner was Noble High School performing a game by Dennis E. Noble. The class A runner up was Scarborough. Scarborough's in the top center and Noble's on the bottom left. The class B winner was Oak Hill High School and the class B runner up was Casco Bay High School. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. I, um, I, I couldn't find my blue hand to, to raise initially. So I, I just wanted to go back and, and um, say thank you, Sandy, to you and um, to also Miss Catch for the, in particular, I mean, thank you obviously for all of the hard work to the district that's gone out. But I also wanted to say thank you in particular to, about the, um, the senior celebration events. Um, and it was great to hear that a survey was sent out. I know I was getting um, some feedback of, of people um, worried about the decision making and how that was going to happen. And so I'm sure that that must um, really make them feel included in, in the plan and like they have control over some of it as well. And so I think that was a, um, a great thing to see. And so I wanted to say thank you to both of you. Yes, thank you for that. On behalf of the senior class, we definitely love having our options when it comes to our end of year activities. Um, and Max, congratulations. Well oh, done. Thank you. It was quite an honor. I was quite surprised and it was it was a really fun experience. So thanks. Um, I won't lie, seeing the um, student report kind of hurt just a little bit because I really do enjoy getting to see all the things that the students are doing, whether it is arts, sports, um, even just walking the halls sometimes is it's amazing to see the energy. Um, so it was nice to see the report. All right, moving into committee Thank report. You. Communications. So this is a little bit of a hybrid of the slide that would have been presented at our previous meeting. Um, remember, we tabled um, doing committee reports. So I left my slide pretty much the same, um, but I did um, update it a little bit. So communications that we've been sending out, um, I included the links here for people who might open this slideshow um, later on or for people who are watching it on YouTube who want to access the slideshow. Um, but we did publish step-by-step uh, -step directions um, for how to access our meetings remotely. Um, there are directions for how to log into Zoom as well as directions for how to watch us on YouTube. Um, I would like to remind everybody that if you would like to submit a public comment, um, we have created an email account which is monitored um, during our meetings and you can send your public comment directly to us and those will be read uh, into the public record if you don't feel comfortable um, with the technology or you just don't want to uh, speak your public comment yourself. Um, we sent a letter out to the district which was updated and also published in the town newsletter um, yesterday. So not only are we trying to make sure that our school community and our families are able to access our meetings, but we're also um, making a real effort to make sure that other members of the community who might have a vested interest um, in our discussions are also aware of how to access us. Um, we were supposed to have a meeting yesterday, um, but in light of the ever-changing um, budget uh, schedule, we actually, I canceled the meeting um, and we're gonna get that scheduled um, uh, rescheduled rather uh, for some time in the near future, but it didn't make sense to have a communications committee meeting yesterday to discuss the budget because town council delayed the first reading of their budget. Um, and so I think that's it. Great. Thank you. And then again, this is just the directions um, in case anybody wanted to see the visual that Hillary created. Thank you guys for putting that together. It's, it is very helpful to have that. Um, 
the technology is different and hopefully each meeting we get a little bit better with using it. Um, so thank you for again making sure that the community could find their way in here as well. Negotiations. Um, I forgot this slide was in here from last week. Uh, we don't really have too much of an update, but um, understandably the social distancing and um, compliance with all of the CDC guidelines have um, delayed the ratification vote for the contract. Um, we still have a tentative agreement in place on all our outstanding issues from Oh God, when was that? March. Um, and once the SEA is able to connect with their members, uh, we hope to be able to ratify that contract. Thank you. Building Steering Committee. Is that me again? Maybe, yes. Uh, I actually think this was the slide from two meetings ago that we already did. Okay, then we can, we're good. Is, is there another one after that? Yeah, you can skip that one too. Okay. Finance committee. Um, cool, so I uh, do have an updated calendar with some dates that I can share as April mentioned um, with the town the postponing or delay of the uh, first reading last night. Um, we're still trying to work out what happens between now when they actually have their first reading and then first reading and second reading. Um, so all those details are, are to be determined. Um, I'm meeting with Peter Hayes, who's the chair of the finance committee tomorrow. Uh, we just have a phone conversation to discuss how we want to proceed. Um, I think both of us are in agreement that we want it to be um, in a joint finance committee fashion. Uh, so most likely we'll, we'll try and get a meeting on the calendar for early next week. Um, it, you know, the town, I don't think they voted on it officially, but um, their expectation is that the town and the school come back with um, basically a 2% increase to the mill rate. Uh, what we need to figure out is what that means for our budget um, in terms of like an actual dollar amount. And so that's going to be the conversation that we have tomorrow uh, to figure out sort of how we move forward and how we get to the point where we can give our leadership team um, and Kate some direction as to, you know, where we, where we start to make adjustments. So stay tuned, more to come, and we'll use the communication committee to get out uh, information on dates and meetings and stuff like that. Uh, but we do have an updated calendar. So the town council's first reading is May 6th. Um, we, um, we've moved back our public hearing to be after that first reading. So we already already had our first reading, um, but the, really there's no budget to discuss. So that's why we wanted to move our pub, uh, public hearing back till after the town council first reading. And then the, the rest of the meetings follow on from there, ultimately leading to a July 14th referendum. I guess it. All right. Liaison roles, um, town council. So Sarah covered pretty much everything um, in terms of what's going on with the town council. Um, the only thing that I would add is a thank you um, the town council um, ha and, and as well as us have been meeting um, multiple times this week, um, sometimes jointly and sometimes just tuning into each other's workshops. Um, but there's a real spirit of um, honest collaboration. And, you know, uh, from where I sit on the finance committee, um, I just am genuinely appreciative that everyone is willing to come together. Um, we know that this is going to be a difficult budget um, cycle. And so, um, we look forward to continuing to work together and, and hopefully arriving at a budget that, I don't know, <laughs> that, that balances the needs of the, of the school with the, with the situation that we're in. And I don't have a, a vocational update. Okay. Hillary? You're on mute. All right. 
Um, I just had a question for Sarah. You had said the town council wanted to get down to a 2% mill rate, or that was like the unofficial guidance. What What's the mill yeah. rate at currently with the budget that um, the school and the town have presented? I believe it's like 5.5%. Is that right, April? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So it's a significant reduction. Um, and it's unclear as to whether that's coming from, I mean, presumably it would be a shared reduction, but it's unclear as to sort of where that reduction comes from right now. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Moving into new business, 10.1 is the second reading of the 2020-2021 school calendar. All right. Um, for this, uh, I know that we had talked about it back in oh, February, um, and it had gone back to the policy committee. Um, we had met and had talked about this. Um, there had been, and I apologize, I don't recall all of the um, changes that had been requested or discussed. Um, and so for April and Alicia, Sandy, Diane, please chime in where I'm missing some points on this. Um, it was determined because of all of the uncertainty, um, we really wanted to maintain the calendar as it was presented um, and not modify from where building leaders had really felt that having that extra time in September was important. Um, so we were bringing that back. Hillary, and you're on mute. <laughs> um, so I, I just, I'm looking at it and I know that we had discussed a lot about um, the beginning of the school year and doing and having kids go for one day and the benefits and, um, and the detriments of that for families and teachers. I, I'm just a little concerned. I, I mean, I brought this up before about having one day for teachers to um, get back in their classrooms. And I just am worried that normally if that's not enough time, it's like gonna doubly not be enough time um, for teachers that probably have a lot more work to do to get ready for the beginning of the school year than they might otherwise. Um, I know they always have a lot of work. And I guess I'm also, uh, we talked, uh, the second thing is we talked a lot about the um, equity of having days for the K-2 teachers to um, meet with their students in advance of, of school days so that they could get a really good sense of where they were um, and that the three, five teachers don't get that. And again, like I understand that um, this is like a crazy time and, and there are advantages to keeping the calendar the same, but I feel like if there was ever a year that those three through five teachers would need that extra time to find out where their kids are at, it would be at, in the fall of next year. Um, so I just wanted to make those points and I don't, you know, people, um, Diane, yeah, you might have a, you might have a answer for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a hand to raise, so I'm raising my real hand. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to add, um, I think that Leanne said this at the beginning, um, but we want to make sure that everybody understands that when we craft a calendar, we need to make sure that it is within five days of all of our community partners that we work with for vocational programming. And so the current calendar that you're looking at, we are within four days of that. Um, and so our ability to revise this significantly is really limited to one day. Um, otherwise, we would not be um, in sync with our community partners um, for that. The other piece, and again, um, I think 
anyone who's on the policy committee, please feel free to add to the conversation. But as we talked about the feedback that was garnered from the last board workshop where we talked about the calendar, um, there, I recall there being a concern uh, on the committee's part about asking parents to flex even more in the fall when we might be getting back to a regular schedule somewhat because we are certainly understanding that our current situation is really creating a lot of stress for parents. And so the potential stress that could be created by having uh, additional time without uh, school days per se, but appointments would um, make that even more difficult for parents. April? Uh, the only thing I would add to that that came out of our discussion at policy was really the need to make a decision um, that we can continue to look at the calendar and, and make a tweak here or there, um, but the, the community is really waiting um, for guidance on this. Uh, the teachers are waiting, um, and so I'm certainly never one to advocate for putting something through um, if it's not ready. Um, but in this case, um, I'm completely satisfied that the calendar has has had a lot of eyes on it and a lot of consideration has gone into the scheduling. And I hope that um, we can put this through so that the community can start to plan. Thank you. So with that, is there a motion to approve the second reading of the 2020-21 school calendar as presented so moved so moved second any additional discussion or are we ready to vote diane if you wouldn't mind taking a roll call sure. miss durgan uh i i yes mrs giftos yes Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And the motion passes, thank you. Um, motion to accept the meeting minutes for the workshop of April 2nd, 2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? And as always, Kelly, thank you for um, taking such great notes for us. It's really appreciated. Um, I think we're ready to vote. Ms. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Scyther. Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Um, item 10.3 is a motion to approve the last day of the 2019-2020 school year. Um, Sandy or Diane, if you wanted to start the conversation um, of yes. where we are. Yeah, so I think we're in a different place than typically where we are at the uh, month of April and, and the springtime. Um, every district in Cumberland County is looking at a possibility of changing the year end calendar. And we, I think it's fair to say that we need a, just a little bit more time to firm this up if we could have that, that granted for us. One, one time we were thinking maybe um, June 12th, which is a Friday, would be um, the last student day. And then we talked about how staff could come in the following four days the next week would stay till the 18th to do some of the stuff that Hillary was talking about, given that they haven't been able to get in school. I just honestly feel like um, I've been so um, involved with the budget 
that I haven't had the time to reach out with my administrators to fully seek their input on this proposal. And with your permission, if I could just have another opportunity to push this out with my building administrators, because I think it's important to get their feedback. And um, I know time is important to try to get closure on this, but um, I, I just feel like I need a little more time to get a consensus and to make sure that we do this thoughtfully. I think that's fair. Um, Nick? So before I say what I was going to say, I just want to ask, would you, would you like us to hold our comments until you are able to have that conversation? I'm fine if you want to share your best thinking and, and certainly be, might, may inform us as well. So the, only, the one thing I would say, I've been giving this some thought um, throughout the day, actually, and I saw all the correspondence from some of our dedicated teachers. I want to thank them for giving us information and, and giving them us their perspectives. Um, but I've heard a bunch of dates thrown around. The 12th actually feels better to me. I, I heard people talking about the first. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that concerned me was something that Monique said a few weeks ago when she was talking about curriculum and the need to scaffold next year with what's going on and, and students having a hard time getting to the point they normally would by the end of school, some students um, with the strictly online format and, and truncating the school year just seems to compound that. Um, I mean, if it's a week, then it's, I, I guess that's not as big of an issue. I feel a lot better about that, but I'm really interested to know what the leadership feels and, and what the teachers feel. Um, I, I would just hate to compound any um, challenges students uh, will have next year by, by ending the school year too early if they're already some of them falling a little bit behind. That's just my perspective on it. Alicia? Thank you. Um, Sandy, could you could you tell me if there's um, been any state guidance on on this topic and also what um, well, I guess the reason why you're collaborating with other superintendents? Well, yeah, so there's so many other topics we talk about given the circumstances that we're in. Um, I'll give you an example. The 12th um, and the 18th that we were looking at, actually it's very similar to what Portland put out. They, they wanted the students to stop and then they wanted staff to come in afterwards and have an opportunity to do some of the things that they've not been able to do since they have not had the opportunity to be in schools. So that was one idea. Um, another idea that um, people have talked about, and I don't know how big this is, but I think uh, some parents might feel like um, to get out a little bit earlier, just given that uh, the stress level at, at all levels, that being at home with students and trying to continue the learning as the warmer weather comes before us could be a challenge. I don't know how big that is in our community, but I was sensitive to that comment. And I think that's something that we should consider as well. I have learned over my career that you never can please everybody with a school calendar, and we certainly do the best we can. But I think it's important thoughtfully to take our time and try to get input before we make a decision. And there's many different opinions about this, so I, yeah. I'd rather go slow to go fast. But so it doesn't need to be a regional decision, if I understand you, as more of a brainstorming exercise? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Max? Um, I would have to agree with the idea of getting out a little bit earlier. I know it was mentioned earlier how students are struggling like now, but if students are struggling now when it's like kind of cold out, like how are they going to operate when it's 70 degrees and sunny outside and they're going to be sitting inside doing schoolwork? Like the longer they stay into school in the summer, I feel like they're not going to get as much work done so or want to do as much work or put as much effort in. So I don't know if like it it's counterintuitive to keep them into this into the in school that far into the summer because they probably just won't feel like motivated to do work because it's so nice out. So that's just my two. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to just acknowledge thank you for the feedback that um, we received from teachers today. I think it was really important to get your perspectives. Um, 
I agree, Sandy. I think we should take our time and do this right and not rush to a quick decision, um, but really take everything into account of, you know, how do students coming back after the vacation? Um, where are we in the course of events? Um, and really just make sure that, you know, as you said, you're doing it, you know, you're taking your time and making this very important decision for the district. Hillary? Uh, I, I appreciate wanting to have um, some more input from leadership and that you haven't been able to get that so far. And um, I also appreciate the collaboration that you're doing with area districts. Um, I guess my question is, uh, is June 12th like a random day? Was that the date we were going to get out originally with no snow days? So are you just like removing the snow days? Mm -hmm out of the calendar or is it that it's backing if the teachers are going to stay for a week to be able to do that work are you backing it out from that date like how I guess I'm just wondering like where that June 12th date come comes from and I think the governor waived the uh, snow days and okay. did, away, did away with those we didn't have to worry about those anymore and okay. Diane you might know also if the governor just said the calendar is really up to us at this point in time. Right. Given the situation that we're in, they waived the number of school days. Um, I believe our original date uh, for ending school was June 10th. Um, but I think the decision that came about in regards to the 12th was it was a natural break because it was a Friday. Um, and then it still allowed the opportunity for teachers to have several days the following week to work, um, hopefully. Uh, if we can be back um, in our buildings, it's hard for us to know now what that will look like, but you know, certainly at this time, that would be the intention if it's possible. So, I, so if this isn't as relevant, but I'm just wondering if there, if there isn't a possibility for our teachers to get back into the classroom, so say we do agree to um, end um, instruction on the 12th and then we um, have the, the following week for teachers to go back to their classrooms, but um, if they aren't able to get back to their classrooms, is there a possibility of, t of moving that week to the end of August or how would that work? So the difficulty with that is that would cross over into a new contract year. Uh, teacher contracts, uh, their days uh, go to June 30th, even though um, you know the way they get paid is different than that. Great. Any other comments? Thank you for giving us an opportunity to provide some thoughts and some feedback. Um, we appreciate being part of the conversation um, and look forward to this coming back on at our next meeting. Thank you. Okay, 10.4. Oh, April, sorry. Sorry, Lingan. From a process perspective, do we need to make the motion and then table it? Um, I don't believe so because we didn't actually make a motion to start with. Um, it was more of an open conversation. I think it doesn't maybe, that mean we have an unopened motion on the or an unfulfilled agenda item. I think we should have an item. How about a motion we make a motion to um all right. I'd like to make a motion to table to our next meeting the approval of the last day of the 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Second. And let's go ahead and do the uh, vote on that. Ms. Durgan. Uh, I just had a quick question. I just wanted to make sure, Sandy, that you and Diane will have enough time to um, solicit the input that you're looking for before our next meeting. Oh yeah, I, I think. Thank you for turning your light on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's starting to creep oh, I... me out. <laughs> oh, I 
can't make this stuff up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so our next meeting is what, three weeks away? May, yeah, May 7th. Yeah, definitely we'll have a proposal for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Scyther. Yes. Mrs. Turner. Yes. Ms. Caldwell. Yes. And Mr. Bennett. Yes. Um, 10.4, I'm making a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to one MRSA 40560 for the purpose of discussing the professional staff contract not to return to public session. So moved. Second. And let's go ahead to vote. Please. Diane. Diane. <laughs> and you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on mute. Miss Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Miss Casalonis. Yes. Miss Layton. Yes. Mrs. Scyther. Yes. Mrs. Turner. Mrs. Turner. Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes, sorry. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. Thank you.